Welcome back one and all to part eight, I believe, of let's mock slash play slash try to survive, which means not die in Resident Evil for Sega Saturn. We're playing as Chris Redfield, the tank, the soldier, the steroid, and we are embarking on something mysterious, something creepy. If you don't believe me, just listen to the music. They don't make it like this anymore, do they? And we're going to start by opening door number one, and we're going to find... Oh, hello there. And really nothing in here except for this clip, so we're just going to grab that. So we're basically trading in one shotgun shell for a round of handgun clips, which actually is kind of worth it. Because one shotgun shell might equal, I don't know, seven to ten handgun clips, depending on what you're fighting give or take now I'm just showing this off this desk is locked I do have a small key for it I'm not going to use it because I played ahead a little off screen and all this in there is two ink ribbons we don't need those and there's a white book sure we'll take it V joke report okay as I stated in the last report there are some common features found in the cells of the plant infected by the tyrant virus we also found another interesting fact through some experiments we found an element that destroys these plant cells rapidly in UMB number 16, one of the series of UMB chemicals that we used for that experiment. We named this UMB number 16 as V-Jolt. In our calculation, it will take less than 5 seconds to destroy plant 42 if we put the V-Jolt directly on the root. You need to mix some of the UMB series chemicals in a specific order to create V-Jolt, but the UMB series chemicals may generate a poisonous gas, ah, which is harmful to the human body. Yeah, poison generally is. Extreme caution should be taken when handling these chemicals. Follow the types of UMB chemicals that can be made, I guess. UMB number two would be red, MP3, purple, UMB number four, green, yellow six, of course yellow, UMB number seven, white, UMB number 13, blue, stimulating smell, don't know about that, V-Jolt, UMB number 16, brown. Hmm. Very curious, right? What are the chances we're gonna be needing to make use of that report? I say very, very likely. But now a book is missing. Thankfully, hey, we just happen to have a book. And it fits with the rest of the Britannica, so we've completed the set. And just like with any set that you complete, it opens a door. We're going to open this door. And I'm sure it's going to be completely safe and clear on the other end of this door. Maybe an escape route. Or a giant plant from hell. That too. That's right. Chris walk. It looked like he got pulled. Like, does the plant have its own gravity? Its own gravitational field? He just got sucked in. Chris! Rebecca! No! It's no use! The roots of it are in the basement! You could walk! Chris! Take this file with me! Choose the information in it! In order to make the potion and kill the room. <laughs> make the potion. Rebecca, please. Chris, don't die. Chris is straight out of the 1700s. Make the potion. <laughs> make the elixir. <laughs> Which is brew. Yeah, we're going to brew up some brew. And the game is kind enough to show us where we need to be in case we are that dense. Hey, I'm never going to turn down a helping hand. Oop, going too far. Turn back around. Thank you. And no, we didn't want to inspect this because it does stay unlocked for you, which is why I got it out of the way. We're just going to go straight here. And you know what we're going to find in here. Now, I like to think that they did it this way because they knew that Chris has so little inventory space. It'll have been asking a lot of the player to, you know, collect all these bottles and to make this. Because you get four bottles here. Now, four bottles plus one type of weapon that is not a knife and some ammunition on the side is a full inventory. So, it doesn't leave a lot of room for other things. So, I think that's why they dumped it on Rebecca. Which is fine. I'm actually appreciative of that. So, we're just going to grab some empty bottles. Head over to the faucet first thing after we grab this last one. And uh, 1996, 1997 graphics. Gotta love it. Do have a charm to themselves, though. 
So we start off with water, which is essential. Isn't it always though? Water, backbone of life. UMB number two, we're going to be using this one a couple times. UMB red. You mix that with the water, but first, just to refresh, you check the formula. 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 plus 4 equals 7, 2 plus 4 equals 6, 6 plus 7 equals 13, 13 plus 3 equals 16. Telling us things we should all already know. We want to get to number 16. So with that having been said, we're going to combine water with 2. Consider water number 1. So that gives us 3. And I'm going to take some more too, because as I said, we're going to be using that again. You just want to make sure you put the right kind. And uh, you just want to make sure you don't put too much of a certain kind in the bottles and you don't have enough to make what you need to make. So we're taking four, which is why I grabbed that two, because we're going to put four and two together. And again, basic arithmetic, that should give us six. And it does yellow six. Now, I believe I'm going to take this water. And water we can combine with the six, yeah? Well, no, we want to take the... We want to take the four. You and be number four. Right? Yeah, combine those four and three to get seven. Or no, combine six and seven to get 13. Don't make me, I got a little distracted there. And we're just about done now. Yeah, don't listen to me right now. Just look at the screen. That's that's what you need to go by. And we'll take the two. We're going to make three one last time, combining the water and the red. And that gives us what we wanted. Last chemical in the procedure. Now we have what we need. We're going to head back to the basement level. Okay, so we're on our way to the basement. Yeah, not gonna lie, I kinda walked away for a moment there. Just, uh, I've been trying something different. I've been trying to record earlier and earlier in the morning when all is asleep, supposedly, but it's not working out. It seems like everyone else is up around the time I'm up, no matter what time it may be, so I don't know. It's just getting harder and harder to find the best times to record with my work schedule. I think I'm just going to have to just, yeah, I think I'm just going to have to, you know, anyway, <laughs> anyway, so still got some herbs I left there. Hmm. Probably should go back for those, but it's kind of a waste of time. I honestly don't think I need them that badly and I don't know how they're still alive. They should have kicked it a long time ago. And if I'm remembering correctly, I know if a certain amount of time passes, they will die naturally. But I thought that would have happened by now. Anyway, we're just going to leave them be. Again, we're not that sadistic. Though, again, it probably would be merciful at this point just to put them out of their misery. And she's kind of just shaking her head. I'm guessing at the smell. And I do like that sound effect of the roots withering. That's... Yeah, I like that. She kind of takes a look back, probably thinking about Chris, or maybe take another whiff of that gas. Maybe it gave her a bit of a buzz. I don't know. I mean, you know, she knows a lot about pharmaceuticals, so she probably has some unconventional ways to get high that the lay person like you and I doesn't know about. So come on, Rebecca, let us in. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Now, the report did say within five seconds, right? 
and that yeah, five seconds. So saved us a boss fight, right? Good new oh oh no, shoulda knew better. Shoulda knew better. Alright, so we gotta fight this thing. I didn't bring any health items, but that was for a reason, so I'm gonna risk it. Now, yeah. You see those big puddles that fall? Leave that noxious gas. Yeah, that's very, very dangerous. It doesn't poison you, but it does a lot of damage, even to Chris. So a few hits, and we're probably done. But I've done this fight a few times just to, you know, experiment with it a bit. And it doesn't seem to be the same amount every time. So I don't know how they determine how much damage it does. Sometimes it did me in in three hits. Sometimes it took four and even five. So we're at caution right now after one hit. So I'm not going to risk it. Just going to try to avoid it didn't work that time also going to just kind of just get this thing out the way because it doesn't take that many shotgun hits which it shouldn't because the whole point of the video was to kill it not even weaken it kill it so the fact that it came back again that's one of the instances where i think the game just kind of gives chris the short end of it which is sad because this playthrough is hard enough without stuff like this to deal with i mean really just having six inventory slots instead of eight I and mean, that could have killed me but thankfully it didn't yeah, having less slots is already kind of making it harder from jump. Anyway, we're going to inspect this fireplace. and see we're on danger. <laughs> One more hit. Got a new mansion key, which is the helmet key. I'm not going to bother to inspect it. It's the only key left that we want to deal with. Only major key. And if you try to inspect that fireplace during the battle, it's going to say it's too dark to see or something like that. So, yeah, oh, it's kind of rude. I can't believe it. Are you okay? Better believe yeah, it. So much for him. We got to the root of the problem. It's sexist. How do you know the saved him? again? I just really thank you. You'd do the same for me, wouldn't you? I guarantee it. Okay, that was a little creepish, Chris. <laughs> well, Chris. This is Richard's radio. Something about the way he said that. Ugh. We received communication from Brad at the courtyard a little while ago, but he is still flying around in the sky. <laughs> he obviously couldn't hear our voices. Maybe his radio is broken. Maybe. Maybe just take an extended joy ride. Understood. I'll keep it. We should somehow let Brad know we're here. Smoke signal anyone? Don't knock the old ways, they still work. At the pharmaceutical room I found a little while ago, I think I will be able to make something. Something for signaling Brad or getting high or what? Anyway, Chris, I'm glad you are safe. Yeah, vague as always, Rebecca. So we have a radio now, which thankfully does not take up an actual inventory slot. We're going to have that for the rest of the adventure. And we're going to be dealing with that in, in a little bit, actually, I think. But first, let's check in on Becky real quick. See if she has anything worthwhile to add. This room is fully equipped with medical supplies. I can treat you, except for your major injury. Would you like me to? What? You can treat us, but you can't help us with our major injury? Yes. Please do something for me, temporarily. <laughs> no. How about permanently? Ask more and you get more, Chris. Don't settle. Maybe she was talking about our inability to do basic math as Most our major injury. Most of medicines are from Umbrella. What's Umbrella? See, Don't it's so you slow, know? Chris. It's a large-scale pharmaceutical company based in Raccoon City. Oh, I see. You know the city that Stars is based in? Chris, take care. The city that you're in right now? Chris, take care! And that's all we're going to get out of her, so. Now, I think this means that we did pretty good. Because depending on choices you make early in the game, there's a chance that Rebecca can die. And we're going to get confirmation probably in an episode or two from now, if that's the case. So, just hold on for that. But I think we're okay. I think she's going to survive. Because, you know, might give her a little bit of lip sometimes. But we want her to make it through, of course. She's our friend, our comrade. And Wesker. look who it is. 
Chris, you're alive. Yeah, you too. My words exactly. Where you been though? It's my question. Where's Jill? Aren't you with Jill? Yeah, her too. I'm sorry. We were attacked by a strange monster. I lost track of her while we were scouting around. I hope she's okay. <laughs> As he looks away. I see. Well, it's not your fault. This place is crazy. Actually. If we stay here, all of us will end up dead. What should we do, Wesker? Run. We have to complete this mission. Whether we escape or stay and look for Jill, we don't have many bullets left, and we can't even protect ourselves. What is the mission at this we point exactly? In trouble. Anybody know? Chris, there are a lot of locked rooms in that house. Check them out one more time. There must be a place to hide safely. I'll look around the house a little more. Okay. Let's get going. Okay, so everybody, there's Wesker. So he's capable of taking out some bees. That's good to know. But what else is he capable of? Hmm. He's made it this far. He's managed to avoid us the whole time. Somehow he's gotten through all these areas that were locked to us. Otherwise we would have run into him by now, right? So, makes you wonder, doesn't it? Makes you wonder. Yeah, and we haven't bumped into Jill either, and he doesn't know what happened to her, so not entirely sure about Mr. Wesker at this point, if that is in fact his real name. Da 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 da. So give me a moment here, staple of any Resident Evil. You gotta, you know, get your little item management going. Gonna combine some things, condense, make the most use of space here. You know. Let's not be wasteful with our space. And kind of figuring out what I want to take with me. I think I'm going to be bringing the handgun back into play soon, but not just yet. Obviously, don't want the lighter. Probably won't need that for quite a while, if at all, at this point. In fact, we, yeah, we might be done with it. There's only a few instances that you can use it in the game, and I think it's all in the early part of the mansion. There was a third instance you could have used it to get a map. But I chose not to because I don't really bother with the maps. First time I played this game, I did use the maps, but uh, you know, after we've played through a couple times, you know, it's not even that I have it memorized, but you, you kind of got a good sense of where to go. Uh oh, somebody's beeping us. Got a page. This is Chris. Brad, can you hear me? Damn! He just said he knows we can't answer him or he can't hear us, so... Again, Chris. Step up your mental game. Now, if you'll notice, I don't hear any footsteps. I think the dogs are gone, which should be a good thing, but it probably isn't. So, with that having been said, we're going to call it a day. This has been part 8 of the Resident Evil... Stay tuned, the next episode is going to be a little bit more dangerous. So let's see if we can continue to survive a little bit longer. Take care of yourselves, have a wonderful one, and see you soon.